start with Perlo because yesterday we did talk about who now that Profar is here, he's likely to be starting in left, or so we assumed. So that leaves center field open for someone like Jackson Merrill, unless he totally has a terrible spring. But AJ Preller yesterday met with the media and said, Oh no, no, no. I'm still talking. I'm still wheeling and dealing, baby. But you know, again, like it's it's been a later developing market, really. I, I think we've had like real, honestly, like, trade conversations that are still ongoing. That you know, usually at this point in the season, most teams are kind of focused on, you know, they have their roster getting to spring training, going and playing. Uh, we've been pretty active, like you know, in terms of still obviously some talented free agents that are out there. Obviously, we signed we signed Profar, you know, yesterday or the day before, um, and there's some active trade conversations. And, and similar to last year, I think we had a, I don't know if we had Michael Walker at this point in time in the season. So, you know, we're always going to be looking to add and improve um you know uh, the, the team that starts right now or starts camp here in the next couple of days it's you know it's not going to be the team you know that uh, that obviously we, we finished with and, and there'll be a lot of a lot of different options as we go through the year and, and honestly i think there'll be some options as we go through spring training hmm mm. interesting Cody though Ellinger? Uh, i mean <laughs> yeah wait, wait hey listen <laughs> when, you, when you think about like the fact that a guy like Blake Snell is still not signed i'm not saying that the padres are going to sign him I, I wouldn't sign him not for what he wants but it's it's actually quite interesting that nobody none of the big market teams the yankees the mets the dodgers the cubs the giants i mean like nobody and and is it has he outpriced himself or does everybody think like we think, which is, hey, we've seen your best and we understand your resume, but we don't think we want to pay you for what you've done. We want to pay you for what you are. And we kind of think you're probably like a Musgrove kind of a guy, like 20 million a year. Like that's kind of what we think. And we also don't want to sign you long term because who wants to give a pitcher like a super long term contract who's already, you know, kind of this yeah. deep into his career. So when you have a guy like Blake Snell, who's still out there and not signed. It does stand to reason, I think, that um, lots of moves are are still going to get made. I think the Bellinger Snell comparison is the same. I think both these guys have incredible awards, MVP, Cy Youngs, but the inconsistency the last few years until last year when it was, oh, what a shocker! It's your contract year again. Like, let's go out and and perform like monsters. Or where, where the previous few seasons we saw kind of what you really are. So I'm not surprised. Both of them want a lot and aren't getting a lot if i were if i were a major league team i would let both these guys sit as long as humanly possible until they come off what these crazy demands are alex just 100 percent nailed it if all of a sudden a contract year shows up and then all of a sudden you're out of your mind with your skill set for your, your play for the year that's a red flag for me as a person who has to cut that check because i'm not going to look at that year now i'm going to look at the other years and why did you have a down year in those years? But now when you know it's time for the money year, now all of a sudden you're playing at the MVP or Cy Young caliber level. That's a massive red flag for me. And I, y'all know I love Blake Snell. I always thought he was the best pitcher on the staff. But I also know that there's a number for him. And it doesn't matter who the organization is, whether it be the Giants or Seattle, even the Dodgers. There's a number for him that I don't think people are willing to exceed because they know what we're publicly saying. Where was this performance every year? How I would, come we don't get this place now every year? If I were the Dodgers, this is what I would do if I were the Dodgers. I would go to Blake Snell and I'll say, I'll tell you what, how about a two year deal? Yep. For yep. 50 million, you know, yep. two years, 55 million, something like that. I, I'd want to do short term at, at, I would call it around market value. I, I don't want to yep. overpay you. I, and I don't want you to feel completely underpaid, but but, but you're if talking I about Padres and Snell. No, I'm wait. No, no, talking no, about what? Anyone? Who are you talking anyone. about? Anyone? Okay. I'm about, if I were the Dodgers, this is what right. I would do with Blake Snell. But it, it, but to out, to your point, Scott, if I do make a mistake and overpay you, I don't want it to hurt me. So yeah, I'll give you twenty five, thirty million, but I'm gonna give it for to you for two years. Yeah. That way, I know you stay sharp and I get my money's worth. But if yeah. I give you this for five years. I know for the first three, I'm not going to get what I paid for. I'll, I'm not, I'm I'll not say this, that. and I 100% believe this to be a fact. If you And I'm going to throw a word that we love around here. If you, as the Padres, oh. sign Blake Snell to any sort of multiple-year deal, that's roster malpractice. Because Ooh. if you're going to spend any sort of money on any position 
and it's not outfield, yeah, right. what are you doing? Yeah. Right? Because yeah. because you got your guys, your pitchers back. Yeah, right. So and that's what you, you got to roll with them. Soto for, right. You got to roll with that. Yeah, you gave up on Soto to get right. arms, mm-hmm. so you so got arms. People, so the, the, the mere fact that they even asked A.J. Preller yesterday, would, are you thinking about bringing Blake Snell back? It is a waste of everybody's time. No, they're not going to bring Blake Snell back because we have no outfielders. Right. I'd rather, right. to your point, by the way, I'd rather go get a Cody Bellinger and I get what you're saying, Browner, about how guys perform in contract years. I don't necessarily subscribe to that, but what I would okay. subscribe to is guys get paid and then then let let down. They they kind of let their foot off the gas when they get mm-hmm. paid. And so and I and I would use Manny Machado as a prime example, you know. And you might tell me, no, you're wrong. He got hurt last year. Okay, maybe. But all I can tell you is is that when Manny Machado was a thirty million dollar a year player. Uh, he had his foot on the gas and he was giving you everything he had. And then they gave him another new contract that extended way out. Now he's a $35 million a year player. And you know what? Hey, listen, I got a lot of other guys around me. They spent a lot of money. Let everybody else pick up the slack. And I feel like he pulled his foot off the gas a little bit. So, And that happens all the time in, with lots of guys that people say, well, he got paid and he's not the same player anymore. So all I'm getting at is, is that if I were the Padres, I would have, a, I would have some interest in Cody Bellinger. I wouldn't have interest in mm-hmm. him as a $20 million a year outfielder. Right. But if I get Cody Bellinger at a decent number, he's a monster upgrade defensively number one. I mean, that guy could cover that outfield from center field. In him and Tatis would be ridiculous defensively. Right. The question is, are you going to get Cody Bellinger, a guy who for like his last two seasons with the Dodgers just couldn't hit? Right. Right. That's- Which we have a lot of that around here. So I don't know. We if have that's- enough of that. But it's at least it's a lefty that can't hit. But he can hit, so he proved he can hit multiple times. He just he do? I don't know what had happened. What did, he, what did he do last year? Do you recall like what his? Because I, re- I remember him making a big comeback in Chicago last year. But I want to say that the Cubs signed him to like a one year, yes, 18, one year 19 deal. million dollar contract, something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because his resume said he's a nineteen million dollar a year player. So his and, MVP season, he was hitting. He hit 305, 47 home runs, one hundred fifteen RBIs. Mm-hmm. Last season, he hit three hundred seven. 26 home runs and 97 RBIs. Yeah. And, but and Wrigley. Had, you're right, Wrigley. And his last three seasons with the Dodgers, he had 239, 165, and 210. And he was just, yeah, he struck out a ton, 100 yeah. times. Like, yeah, it was last year was a remarkable season for him. Yeah. But I would say Cody Bellinger would help this team big time, but not, you, you can't go signing him for a five year, $100 million contract. You just can't do it. 